What's going on friends? Today, at the request of several viewers, we're going to take a look at camshafts for the Evolution engine. We're going to take a peek at what's out there on the market, and we're also going to give you guys some tips to try to help you find the right camshaft for your Evolution engine. Now we all know the Evo is not about big horsepower numbers, but with the right camshaft, good tuning, and good supporting parts, you could definitely expect roughly about 75 horsepower out of a well-tuned, well-put-together Evo engine. Yeah, I know, that's, but riding an Evo is not about big horsepower and big numbers. It's really just about the cruising and the feel of that motorcycle. But if, even if you have a stock Evo, or if you've got one that's already got pipes and air cleaner and a jet kit in it, you're going to really appreciate what a good camshaft can do for your motorcycle. So before we get too far in the video today, don't forget to leave a like on the video if you enjoy it, and please consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. Now you can choose any camshaft you like, no matter what model of motorcycle you ride. Now if you ride a heavy touring bike, you might be more interested in something that produces low-end torque. But if you have an FXR or a Dyna, you might be interested in something that produces power more in the mid to upper RPM range. Or even if you have a soft tail and you ride it two up just around town, you might be interested in something that's more geared towards low to mid range power. So you can put any cam you like in your motorcycle. You just want to make sure you tailor that cam to where you ride the most and how you ride the most. If you're riding two up, if you're riding with a lot of luggage on it, if you're out touring, cities, mountains, highways, it just varies. So just kind of bear in mind that when you're going and looking for a new camshaft. So for today, I really want to keep it simple, especially on the Evo engine because you don't want to put too many power, too much power into the Evo engine because you could kind of start to have some problems with it. So by keeping it simple today, we're mainly going to just focus on straight bolt-in cams. What that means is, is you're going to retain your stock lifters, your stock push rods, there's really nothing else you have to do, but later on in the video, I am going to give you some suggestions that you might want to change when installing your new camshaft. So the first camshaft I want to start with today is the Andrews EV23. It's really hard to beat Andrews when it comes to the Evo, and as we move through the video, you're going to see why. The EV23 is really for the rider that wants it all. The Andrews EV23 is a direct bolt-in cam, retains all the other stock components, and the party starts at about 1800 RPM on the EV23 and it runs out to about 5200 so that's a nice broad torque and horsepower range for you right there that's why I say it's for the rider that wants it all but let's go check out the dyno graphs and see what kind of performance the EV23 is going to give us the EV23 can be picked up for about 150 bucks which is a really good price for a camshaft and just like they said power comes on about 1800 RPM and this thing just pulls strong all the way up here to about, oh, let's look, about 52, 5300. It kind of flat lines out. And that's where we get our max horsepower. And our max horsepower on this cam came out at 74.60 horse, which is really good. Torque, too, stays kind of flat. Then it starts to pick up. And it looks like the torque's going to peak out right around about 4,000 RPM before it starts to drop off at 84.61 foot-pounds. And that's pretty impressive. And for 150, about 150 bucks, that's really hard to beat, guys. So what do you guys think of the numbers on the, on the Andrews EV23? Like I said, that is a broad all-around cam. Now, the next cam on the list today is also from Andrews. This is the Andrews EV27. This is a great cam for more of your heavy motorcycles, your touring bikes, uh, like if you're going to load down your touring bike, or just any bike in general, really. This cam is really made for torque. Now the Andrews EV27 is another bolt-in cam. This cam has really fast valve opening and close times, which really produces a broad torque range throughout the RPM range. And now this cam, the RPM range is from about 1600 all the way up to 6000 RPM. So let's go take a look at a graph and see what that Andrews EV27 can do for us. Now this is the Andrews EV27, and this is from two different bikes but this just kind of shows you how similar setups can vary just a little bit. Now, they claimed that 1600 RPM is where this cam come on, but it looks like down here we're getting about 2000 RPM. But as you can see, it pulls very steadily, almost as steady as that EV23. Actually, I think this one pulls a little better. But we're gonna run all the way up here, and it looks like we're 
Looks like we're going to top out about, all right, about 5,500 actually on this. Didn't really get close to 6,000 before the power dropped. But on, one, on the blue here, we got 85 horsepower, and then about 84. That's pretty high for an Evo. But the torque's really the nice story here. We're getting about 80 foot-pounds of torque. Now, I'm going to follow this other bike here. We're starting out about 2,000 RPM as the torque comes on. Takes a dip, but while the torque takes a dip, that horsepower is climbing. Then the torque gets up here and it kind of levels off, flattens out, and then it picks up again, and it looks like it runs out about, and it runs out about 84 foot-pounds of torque, 85 on the other motorcycle, but very closely related. Good looking cam. Once again, about 150 bucks, you can have one of these in your bike. So the Andrews cams don't have a bad price on them at all. About $150 you can pick one up out there for. Now, what was your favorite? The EV23 or the EV27? Me personally, I think I'd lean towards the EV23, but you guys let me know what you think in the comments. Now, I know there are some guys out there that just have to stick with the Harley Davidson parts, so I went ahead and threw in a couple of Screaming Eagle cams out there. Now, these Screaming Eagle cams are about 200 bucks. Now, Screaming Eagle has two different cams out there. For the heavier touring bikes, you're going to want to look at the SE4 cam. The SE4 cam's RPM range is roughly 3,000 to 5,000 RPM to kind of help you with that low to mid-range torque. Now, if you have a lighter bike, say the Dyna, the Softail, you might be more interested in the SE11. The SE11 comes on a little later and runs out a little further compared to the SE4, and it's also 199 bucks. The RPM range on the SE11 is about 3,500 to 6,000 RPM. But anyhow, let's take a look at the graph and kind of see what the Screaming Eagle cam could do for your Evo. Now, in the Screaming Eagle cams, we're only showing the dyno graph for the SE4, but the SE11 is going to be very close to this. Now, your stock Evo's horsepower is right about 4950, and our torque is a little over 65, which we said these motors were not known for power. But bolting in one of these cams, we have a nice strong pull all the way up to the red line. We're getting just a little over 70 horsepower, a little below 75, 72, 73. But our torque comes on, and it maintains pretty well. And then it takes a nice big pull up here to the top with about 80 foot-pounds of torque. And that's not bad with a cam, especially from Screaming Eagle, since they're really known to be more geared towards emissions. But that wasn't so much the case on the Evos, as obviously we could see here with the gains. So really not bad gains at all from the Screaming Eagle cams. And at only 200 bucks, that's a pretty good price for a Harley part. And plus with the Evos, you get away with putting a cam in a little cheaper because there's only one and not two, like on the twin cam engines. But for my next cam, I know you guys have probably been waiting for it if you watched any of my camshaft videos. We're going to take it to look at the wood. The wood cam, the wood W6. The Wood W6 is an excellent all-around cam, whether you have a touring bike, Dyna, FXR, Softail, doesn't matter. The Wood Cam might be just right for you. When it comes to the Wood Cam and its power delivery, they really stress that this cam is strong off of idle through 5,500 RPM. And Wood Cams, as you may know, they're actually made by Andrews, but they're made to Bob Wood's specs. Now, they are a little bit more expensive than our other cams on the list today. They can run anywhere from $250 to about $400, just depending on where you buy it. But today, we're just going to look at the Wood W6. Let's go check out the dyno craft on that Wood cam. Now, here we have the Wood W6 with one of Bob Wood's carburetors installed on it. And he wasn't kidding. This thing comes off right off the line, and it just starts climbing. This thing just keeps digging and grinding all the way up to almost 75 horsepower. Now, like I said, bear in mind that is impressive for an Evo, but look at the torque. It even comes on right off of idle, bounces, dips a little bit, and then we start climbing again. We're peaking out at about 80 foot-pounds of torque. Like I said, Bob Wood cams are very, very impressive. This Night Prowler line, they do this across all the engine platforms. Whether you have an Evo, an M8, a twin cam, doesn't matter. They're all equally impressive in their respective engines. The wood cam is literally horsepower and torque as soon as you let the clutch out, and it doesn't stop. This thing grinds and pulls all the way up to the red line. Now, as I mentioned, it is a little bit more expensive. I've seen them out there from anywhere from $250 to $400, so it's really a huge benefit to shop around when you're looking for a wood cam. Now, you might be noticing a little bit of a theme here. Pretty much all of our bolt-in cams that we've looked at today so far they all run up about between 70 and 75 horsepower, and you get close to about 80 foot-pounds of torque. And that's really common for an Evo. Now, while the power numbers are about the same, the only difference is, is the delivery. 
And when it comes to choosing one of these cams, you really want to pay attention to those dyno graphs and kind of look at the RPMs, compare those to the RPM ranges that you ride in, and kind of look at it and really pay attention and study that and see which one really fits best for your needs. So the last cam I have for you today, guys, is the Fueling 518. Now, Fueling does make a couple of other Evo cams, but they are not direct bolt-in cams. You'd have to change your valve springs. But with the 518, you get to keep the stock valve springs. And this cam comes on about 1650 RPM and runs out to about 5500. And once again, it's going to produce about, about the 70 to 75 horsepower range, just like the other cams we looked at. So guys, what did you think of our list of Evo cams today? Did I leave anything out? Did I hit all the good ones? If you know of another good one out there that I didn't mention, let us know in the comments. And also, let us know what your favorite one on the list was. So putting a cam in your Evo can be relatively inexpensive, but as easy as it is to work on an Evo, when you're in there to do that camshaft, you might want to go ahead and uh, consider upgrading your inner cam bearing from the INA bearing to the newer Torrington style, which is a lot better bearing. Also, another good upgrade while you're already down there, you've got to take it off to get to it anyhow, look at upgrading your ignition. Putting a new ignition in it, coupled with that new cam, the right exhaust, and a good jet kit, you're really going to be pushing the 75 horsepower range. Not saying you're not going to get close to 75 horsepower without those, but it never hurts. Plus, it'll make the bike run a lot better. Now, while you've got your camshaft out, you've got your ignition off, you've got your inner cam bearing out, now would be a great time to address the lifters. Evos usually need lifters about every 40,000 miles due to their wonky pushrod angles. Now, I always like to put in new lifters when I do a new cam. I'm not saying it's totally necessary. It just depends who you talk to. Some people will tell you just put the old lifters back in and run on down the road. But with Evos needing a new set of lifters at 40,000 miles, I don't want to put a cam in and then have to come back in 20,000 miles and end up changing my lifters anyhow. So as cheap as those cams are, it really leaves some room to do some of these added upgrades in there. So guys, I hope this gave you a few things to think about if you're looking at doing a cam. You know, just thoughts about your lifters, your ignition system, and of course you want to already have the supporting parts like the air cleaner, a jet kit, and the exhaust system. But as old as Evos are now, if you've got one, most of that stuff's already been done to it. So guys, that's all I've got for you this week. I really hope that gave you some insight into what's out on the market and really what you could do on an Evo relatively inexpensively with no more than these cams cost. What really just starts to add up is some of the supporting parts and the while you're in there type things. But anyhow guys, please don't forget to drop a like on the video if you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And guys, you be safe out there. Dodge those cars. People are still crazy as ever. And I will catch you guys in next week's video. Thank you for watching.